everyone, my name's Calvin and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. So in today's video, I'm going to cover a pretty advanced technique for painting bird illustrations like this one. And I think the techniques I cover in this video are probably useful for any kind of painting project where you're painting from a photo, because it will kind of show how I break down something in a photo into sort of simpler shapes, and then how I interpret those uh, into a sketch and then into an illustration. And because this tutorial covers a lot of uh, really repetitive coloring uh, processes that are simple, uh, I think I'm just going to skip ahead uh, and just show you the end result because if you're watching this tutorial, you're already uh, pretty comfortable with the watercolor kit and I think you'll be able to understand uh, what I've skipped over. Now I'm going to start out with a blank watercolor paper texture and as usual, it's the St. Petersburg texture. And for the brushes, uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different here and I'm going to use uh, just the feather brush kit. So I've made this sketch uh, from a photo and I can show you what that photo looks like. Here's the original photo. Now when I'm sketching this, uh, I'm sketching it on top of the bird photo but on a separate layer so it's like, you know, separate. Uh, and then when I'm kind of looking at the shapes in the bird, that's what I'm trying to separate. So I'm trying to see the bird like this, just broken up into simple single color shapes. And then when I make the sketch on top of that, uh, you can see uh, I've just broken up those areas. And Basically, uh, some areas have very clear boundaries, like if I turn on the original image, there's a very clear boundary here. But in this area, it's very kind of nebulous. So if you notice uh, in my sketch in those areas, I did a kind of very soft broken line. And that just helps me kind of remember, okay, in this area, it's gonna be more blurry, whereas this area needs to have a clear boundary. Now also on a separate layer, I made a tiny little uh, copy of the original bird photo up in the corner. And I'm gonna use that uh, as a reference and also a color palette. Now in Procreate, uh, you probably know this already, but if you just use your finger and do a long press, it'll give you a color picker. So we can grab colors from the bird uh, and then paint them on here like that. So the first step for painting uh, is gonna be to create a background wash. So I'm gonna go to the feather brush kit and I'm just gonna use the wet and abstract brush. And I'm gonna choose a very light, uh, this is kind of a slightly bluish gray because the bird itself kind of has a slightly bluish gray tone. Uh, and I'm just gonna do a quick kind of silhouette of everything, the bird and the branch all on one layer. Now after that, uh, I'm gonna do the details of the face. And this takes a surprising amount of time, but it basically looks like this. So I just carefully painted the eye, the highlights, uh, kind of going back and forth between the reference image and the illustration and trying to find a kind of balance there because I don't want this to look too realistic because if I do that, I'm gonna have to make the rest of the bird kind of match that and that will just take hours and hours of painting. So try to find the simplest way to interpret the eye and the beak uh, and turn that into a, a simple illustration. Now, once you've got the face uh, and the background wash, these are two separate layers, the face detail uh, being at the very top, you can go ahead and add some colors. And I'm just gonna do the colors of the body of the bird. I'm ignoring the branch uh, and the feet. And when I, when I add the colors, it looks like this. And to do that, the brush I used is just the same wet and abstract brush that I used to do the background wash. So the colors here, it, you know, this isn't a very complicated bird, but it, I mean, there's three colors here, four colors, but it still takes forever to do this. But there's no tricks here. It's just a wash of blue, a little bit of a shadow there, the orange, the yellow, just kind of approximating uh, the rough colors of the bird. Um, and it does get a little bit of faded here, but it doesn't have to be that way because we can go in there again with the water blender. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna turn off the sketch and I'm gonna make sure my uh, color layers here, it's all on one layer, uh, is selected. And I'm just gonna use the water blender and I'm gonna try to uh, blur some of those areas that are more uh, gradual, but I'm gonna be careful not to blur some of the hard edges too much because I'm gonna use those later on uh, and, and I don't wanna totally lose them now. Now, one of the reasons I did the face on a separate layer is because I'm gonna be doing so much blending. So they're kind of safe on that separate layer so I don't have to be so careful uh, when I'm blending around them. So after I've got the main colors uh, laid down and blended, uh, I'm gonna move on to the branch. So I'm gonna make that on a separate layer. And I'm just gonna use a kind of warmish gray color. I'm gonna use that same uh, wet and abstract brush uh, in the feather brush kit and just fill this out real quick. 
So the branch ended up being, you know, very flat and in this case too dark. So I'm gonna go to the uh, hue saturation and brightness and just brighten it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna shift the hue to a kind of better shade of gray. There we go, that looks a lot better. And I can kind of erase this overlapping bit a little bit there. And uh, just to make this look more three dimensional, just so I can, you know, stop worrying about it now and focus on the bird. I'm just gonna add a quick shadow to the bottom, but I'll add more details later on. There, so the branch is just roughed in just enough so I can, uh, so it's not like distracting me from working on the details in the bird. And uh, now I can quickly do the feet of the bird. So I'm gonna do those on another layer. And I'm just gonna grab the color uh, from the foot of the bird like that. And I'm gonna use the light barb liner to do those real quick. And they ended up being a little bit of the wrong color, so I'm just gonna shift the hue and try to find a more bluer tone. There we go. That looks a little bit more like the uh, original photo. Now after the feet are done, I can move on and add some kind of texture to the body of the bird. Uh, I wanna give it this sort of flowing feathery texture that we see in the original photo. So I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna make sure it's above everything, even above the face detail. And for the brush, I'm gonna grab the light barb liner and I'm gonna start with the face here just to show you kind of an example uh, of what it is and then I'll, sp I'll skip ahead uh, and do the whole body here. But here's the detail on the original photo here. You can see it has these uh, much more saturated, brighter feathers, kind of fading to darker ones. We got some black little lines in there. So I'm gonna try my best to kind of approximate that. So I'm gonna grab that color and see what that looks like. That looks pretty good actually, but maybe I will lighten it up a little bit. And I'm just gonna quickly add some kind of line detail like this. And I'm gonna darken that up and sort of work my way just roughly around the head. Uh, and just going with the grain of the feathers and occasionally dropping in uh, a different shade, I'm gonna fill in the whole head this way. So that looks pretty good. I like that detail there. I'm just gonna go ahead and do basically the same technique to the rest of the body. Now I've got all the uh, feather sort of texture detail done, but I wanna go back in there with the um, water blender brush and at a medium size, maybe 50%. I'm just gonna blur some of these uh, feathery lines in a few areas because at least for me, I have a tendency to get a little bit carried away with it and kind of overdo it. I don't want it to look like a colored pencil illustration. So anywhere it gets too dense with those lines, I will just kind of blur it out a little bit. So at this point, it's looking really good, but also kind of flat. So now I'm gonna use some uh, use the selection tool and kind of shift the brightness kind of selectively in a few areas to make this a little bit more uh, three-dimensional. So when I look at the um, original photo here, there's kind of a highlight here in this area along the head, a little bit more of a shadow going on there. Definitely the foot here is highlighted. Uh, so I'm gonna try to um, uh, copy that over and try to apply that to the colored layer. So if I open the layers panel, and you remember a long time ago I made this colored layer, that's where I'm gonna do the brightness changes. So I'm gonna make sure that layer is selected. Then I'm gonna grab the selection tool and set it to freehand. And I'm gonna circle the areas there where I want the highlight to be first. Just like that, and then I'll feather it out. Now I can go to hue, saturation, and brightness and just raise the brightness of those areas. And I'm gonna do the opposite over here. So I'm gonna add a kind of a shadow along this side. So I'll feather that one out. Hue, saturation, and brightness and just darken it over there. And also I think I want to add a kind of highlight here on the cheek a little bit. There we go. Now for the foot, that's on a separate layer. So I'm going to make sure I've got the foot layer selected. And I'll do a highlight here and also another one here. And I'll just feather those out a little bit this time. Hue, saturation, and brightness. And just raise the brightness of those. Now next, I'm just going to quickly finish up the branch here. And I'm going to do that, I think, by 
uh, adding some splatters and some line detail to it, but I'm gonna try to keep it abstract. I don't want the branch to be the focus. So that's it for the branch. And uh, now I can work on finishing up the bird. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge everything together onto one layer. And I'm gonna add a dark outline on top of this. I'm gonna make a new layer above everything. I'm gonna select maybe a slightly bluish black like that. Then I'm gonna grab the uh, light barb liner brush and at a pretty small size and very sparingly, I'm gonna add a kind of uh, ink outline. But try not to think of it like an outline necessarily. Maybe it's more like a, like a shadow. So in a couple of areas where you're losing definition, you can just add this kind of faint line like this. And it's important not to get too carried away with this. Now in this area along the neck, it's definitely uh, a shadow area. You can see the shadow there on the original photo. So I'm gonna go in there and add a couple of these black lines just to kind of differentiate that a little bit. And that's probably enough. And I'm just gonna go ahead uh, and move on and just do a bunch of very, very sparing uh, lines here and there kind of randomly across the uh, illustration. Now, once I've got a bunch of these kind of black lines on there, I can go back again with the eraser and just look at any of them that just don't look quite right and just kind of erase them. And that's really the main reason I did this on a separate layer, just because I, I do have a tendency to get a little bit carried away with the black lines. There we go. So that's it for the black lines here. And I'm gonna do some white lines. So I'll make those on a different layer and I'll choose pure white using the same uh, light barb liner brush. I'm gonna go in and add a few uh, areas where I want there to be like a highlight. And I recommend lowering the opacity of the highlight layer just because pure white is a little bit too much. So maybe I'll set it around maybe 20 or 30% like that. And there we go, this one is all done. And I'm so satisfied with the way this one turned out. I know this tutorial is probably harder to follow than some of my other videos, but I just wanted to make a video for the more advanced painters out there who wanted to see uh, my workflow and how I handle a more complicated illustration, uh, especially when I'm painting from a photo. Now here's what it looks like all printed out, and uh, it really looks nice. I mean, uh, it's one thing to see it on the screen, but it's totally another thing to print it out. Uh, and I think this artwork is really suitable for anything, even a sticker, uh, putting in a frame. Uh, I've been painting a handful of birds because I was thinking about doing a series. And there we go. That pretty much wraps it up. Uh, as always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.